Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School this morning on uh, July the 12th. Uh, today's lesson is entitled The Soil and it's taken from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to, through 23. That's Matthew 13 verses 1 through 23. Let us begin by going to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we, we praise your name this morning for your love and your endless grace. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our, of our sins. Help us, Lord, to be uh, as you called us to be, uh, fishers of men and, and followers of you. And, and, and Lord, help us to be uh, your ambassadors in the world that we live in. By our standards, it seems to be a very difficult time. And, but Lord, we know that you love us. Um, help us to be faithful and, and share your word to those around us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word in the Sunday School lesson this morning. May your name be glorified in Christ. Amen. <clears throat> As Kelly said in the, um, uh, in, the, in the Facebook pages, we're going to be talking about uh, different words in the um, Scripture and, and, and sharing that. Uh, and last Sunday was the yoke. The Sunday is the soil, and uh, this Sunday is a is a parable. We're starting in uh, in in verse in chapter twelve. Jesus had um, gone to a house, and his family uh, wanted to speak to him. But there were so many people that they couldn't, couldn't get to them. And, and Jesus says that whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. So as the crowd grew, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake, which is Lake Gennesaret or as we most often know it as the Sea of Galilee. Such great crowds gathered around him, and he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. Now, a wise person told me one time that one of the best ways to read the Scripture and to use all your senses um, uh, in the story is to picture yourself in a tree looking down um, at, at what's going on or being in the crowd. So this morning, picture yourself there with the crowd uh, beside the Sea of Galilee. Now, as, as I've thought about many times, um, and in this case, um, I've often wondered what Jesus sounded like. And I just picture him being soft spoken and every word counting and, and meaning something. And much like a, a, a grandparent, although he was only 33 years old when he died, but much like a grandparent as they talk to their grandchildren with, with love and, and wanting the best for them and and 
always leading them in, in the right direction. Well, here uh, Jesus begins by, uh, well, let me go back. In chapter 8 of Matthew, he was in the same situation and, and there was such a large crowd that he had been uh, healing and casting out spirits. And he and the disciples got on a boat and went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Here he is teaching and all he wanted to do was not to be so crowded by the people so he got in a boat and just went a little offshore so that he could still teach but not be crowded by the people. Um, this is pretty effective <laughs> because they, they're not going to go in the water. And just picture uh, Jesus there teaching. Going back to what I said a minute ago, as I have said in a few Sundays ago, Jesus doesn't do anything accidentally. Here he wants to teach, and what he's about to say uh, is important. So he begins in uh, chapter 13, verse 3. And he told them many things in a parable, saying, Now, a parable, P-A-R-A-B-L-E, is as been described as a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. A very simple story that you can understand at a certain level, but you can't understand um, at a, a deeper level. Uh, William Barclay says that a parable conceals truth from um, those that are too lazy to think, but it shares uh, a deep message for those that, that will think. Now, everybody loves a story, and it's always been interesting to me and funny to me that when the minister starts talking and he starts telling um, about his childhood or someone else that he knew and a, a story involves that relates to the sermon, it's like a respite and you, and you stop and listen. I remember being in school, in, in high school, and we had a teacher that it was so easy to get her off the subject. And somebody about every other day would say, Miss so-and-so, can you tell us about such and such? And she was just so excited about uh, sharing a story. And, and so um, it took us off the, the subject, took her off the subject. Well, <clears throat> that wasn't Jesus' um, um, concern. He, he, he wasn't trying to be sidetracked. He was actually trying to make a point uh, with his story. And he begins by saying, listen. Now, that, that's a good plan to, as you're talking to a crowd, and you can imagine in your mind, the crowd talking and making uh, uh, pro and con comments probably about Jesus and what he has been doing, where he's been. Now, he had been preaching, teaching in the synagogues, but the scribes and the Pharisee were kind of pushing him out of the synagogue, so he was teaching wherever he could, and, and here he is at the sea. And as they're talking, Jesus gets their attention by saying, listen. And he tells this parable, a sower went out to sow, 
And as he sowed, came and a birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quick, quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And then Jesus repeats in another way, Let anyone with ears listen. Let anyone with ears listen. Now, Jesus has completely told his story. Now, you have to remember that Jesus was just speaking orally to the crowd. They didn't have overhead projector. Um, or, or they didn't have a handout. Uh, he just spoke to them orally. Even if they had a, um, um, a handout, most of them would not have been able to read. They, they were, um, most of them were not more illiterate and were not able to read. So they had to be good listeners. Now in most parables, here's the deal. We're now in a, a pregnant pause. Jesus has finished his story. And I picture everybody looking around at each other and they're going, what did he say? Even his disciples are looking at each other. Perhaps they're looking at the people and wondering uh, to what level did they understand what Jesus was saying. Um, he tells about four kinds of, of soil, and he, he says that um, the first one falls on a pathway. Now, you have to understand in early Palestine, usually the fields were narrow and long, and in the middle was a, a small path where people would go from point A to point B, and it would be pressed down. And Jesus said that, and, and I can imagine him sitting in the boat and and doing the broadcasting of the seeds. Now, I don't know how many of you have done this, but I've, I've done grass seeds and broadcast them over the yard, and you, you become, the more you do it, the better you are, but you don't stop at this point and then start back. It's just the constant broadcasting. So he's broadcasting, and it's going a, across the place that they walk. And... Of course, the seeds don't penetrate, and the birds come and eat the seeds that are lying on the path. Um, the next one is where there's rocky ground. Now, my roommate in, in college, who was one of my best friends, um, was from Massachusetts. He lives there now. And I remember talking to him, and we were talking about farming. We both came from uh, farming families. And I would tell him some things, very little, about what I knew about farming in the South. Well, the one thing that Bob told me that stuck with me forever 
is in the springtime in Massachusetts, in western Massachusetts, about an hour and a half, an hour and a half from Boston, is that they had to go out in the spring and pick up rocks, huge rocks. Can you imagine having to do that every spring? Now, this is what was happening in Palestine, that they had a rocky uh, surface below the dirt. And as seeds were spread there, the heat from the sun and reflection of the rock underneath would cause some heat, more heat than normal. And the seeds would grow up quickly, but they basically wouldn't have uh, much roots. So they would uh, not survive. Now, once again, there was an area of dirt as the seeds came up, um, there were thorns. Now, I think about um, uh, my daddy's farm and my family's farm growing up. In my mind, I can tell you every field where uh, at the ends of the field where there were weeds and, and thorns growing up, usually by the, by the woods. And we all know that as, as a plant grows up and then a, a, a thorn, thorn or a vine or, or, or something like this grows up, it's going to twist around and, and choke, choke it. And then finally is the good soil. And this is one that uh, produces the har harvest. Now, this is what the people were understanding. Now, the disciples asked Jesus in verse 10, why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus tells them, you understand more than they understand. And the prophets have told and, 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 and they should know more than they know, but you, you know more because you've been with me. So let me explain this to you. Now, in the New Testament, there are some 47 parables. And one commentary said that there's only two parables uh, where Jesus explains uh, the meaning to the disciples. Now, Jesus goes on and says, Hear then the parable of the sower. The sower is Jesus Christ. The seed is the Word of God. And um, so, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. And this is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares, but the cares of the word and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. Now, the first part, the part that is on the path, is those that are hard-hearted. Now, this is something that I want to explain. Every preacher at some point in time, perhaps every Sunday, 
has these four types of soil in the congregation, every Sunday school teacher will experience the same thing as we're spreading the seed, the seed of God, the, the, uh, the Word of God. There are some people that are hard-hearted. It says in Exodus that when Moses was going to go back to Pharaoh, God said, oh, go, go back and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, but his heart will be hardened. So it's virtually impossible, not impossible, to touch that person that has come in to hear the word, but is so hardened because of their experiences that they block out the grace of Jesus Christ. And this is where the devil um, intervenes and keeps the person from accepting Christ as the Savior or hearing uh, the Word. Now, the rocky soil, um, we're all going to have rocky times. And one of the wrong misconceptions is, is when we accept Christ as our Savior, everything's going to be a bed of roses. And we won't have these quote, rocky times. And a person is very excited for such, such a short period of time, but then that joy is taken away. Then Jesus talks about the thorny, thorny soul, and here he talks about the lure of wealth, and the cares of the world, that as we, 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 Christ wants us to live in this world following Him and to grow in our faith. But here are people that get um, lured away from, from that and they forget about uh, their relationship with Christ. And there's other things pulling us like, believe it or not, I know you can't believe this, but social media and the, the liberal media on, on TV that depresses all of us if we spend too much time reading or uh, listening to it. And the last one is the good soil where people hear the word and they want to continue um, in the faith and grow in the faith. They are the ones that are, are going to be blessed. Um, now, they taught, he, he says that some will be multiplied a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. This is not a gigantic crop. This is just a, an abundant crop. And we all have that opportunity. Now, I looked this up and, and I had heard, I didn't remember the numbers. Jesus reached a relatively small number in his three years of ministry because uh, he, all, he, all, he hadn't traveled by foot and it was new to a lot of people. The disciples reached more when the, uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit um, came to them at Pentecost and there was 5,000 saved and then 3,000. When I looked up um, Billy Graham, Billy Graham spoke to, uh, in person, 215 million people. 215 million people in 185 countries. Of those 215 million 3.2 million 
professed a, um, to know Jesus Christ. Now, that's a lot of people. But think about it. Um, that's only one and a half percent of the people that he witnessed to. Now, one of the things Billy Graham said is that he didn't know how many of these people had a continuing lifelong commitment to Jesus Christ. How many of these, this word, fell on the good soil um, versus the uh, rocky soil or those with thorns? Now, we as teachers and those as ministers have to always be cognizant of the fact that the word that we testify, um, we don't know the effect it has on the people uh, to which we talk. We only have to be, be obedient to the command of Jesus Christ to be witnesses to him, go out and teach and preach the word and pray that the Holy Spirit speaks to individuals and they respond positive, positively um, to the spoken word. We pray today that you are one that continues to hear the Word, study the Word, grow in the Word, and flesh out the Word to those um, to whom you come in contact every day because you may be the only Christ that someone will know. May God bless you in your faith and your understanding.